Kanui te mihi ki a koutou. Kia ora, good morning everyone, and can I say welcome to the release of National's Back Pocket Boost Tax Plan. This plan confirms that a national government can do what we've said all along that we will do, which is to put money in the back pockets of New Zealanders as part of a prudent, fully funded and balanced tax plan. And yes, we can do it, despite Labor mismanaging this economy so badly that after six years of being government, and in the very last week of Parliament, they are now scrambling for savings so the openings of the books in a few weeks' time is not so embarrassing for them. The bottom line is this. New Zealand should be a country that if you work hard, you can get ahead. But after years of economic mismanagement by Labor, topped off by two years of rampant inflation, huge increases in interest rates and a shrinking economy, most Kiwis are going backwards. And in particular, the squeeze middle is being left behind. These are New Zealanders who work hard, sometimes juggling multiple jobs and, and family responsibilities. But high inflation, high interest rates and high taxes are eating away at their incomes. But I'm telling you, hope and help are on the way because our national government will deliver for the squeezed middle. These workers deserve to keep more of their earnings. And I have every confidence that they will spend their extra cash more wisely than any Labor government can. This package is deliberately aimed at helping middle New Zealand and getting our country back on track. And as well as providing tax relief, we are going to tackle the underlying drivers of inflation and we are going to bring it down. And lower inflation will almost certainly mean lower interest rates and quite simply, New Zealanders will be better off with a national government. We're going to not only restore hope and confidence, but help people in the most practical way by allowing them to keep more of their own money that they earn so they can use it in the best way for themselves and their families. We're talking about up to $250 more a fortnight for an average income household with kids and childcare. We're talking about up to $100 more a fortnight for an average income household with no kids. And that is meaningful tax relief that will make a real difference to people's daily lives. So the choice for New Zealanders this election is incredibly clear. It's more taxes with Labour, the Greens and Te Pāti Māori, or it's lower tax and more pay in your back pocket with National. Let me now hand you over to Nicola, who's going to take us through the details of our plan. Thank you. Kia ora koutou katoa, na mihi nui ki a koutou. Uh, good morning to everyone. Today is an exciting day. It is the day that National gets to set out how we will deliver meaningful income relief for the squeezed middle of New Zealand who are finding it so hard under Labour and during this cost of living crisis. I'm going to take you through our plan. Important context for our plan is the sheer volume of government spending that is occurring under the Labor government. This year, Labor will spend 80% more than it did in its first year of office, amounting to a billion dollars more in government spending every week. The government's tax take has risen significantly to fund that increasing spending, with the tax take up more than $100 million a day. National's concern is that not only has the government failed to deliver improvements in public services with all of this spending, but that the tax burden is falling disproportionately on working people. They are paying higher tax rates on their incomes and on their petrol, while also facing higher rents and costs uh, in their lives. And this is happening at the same time as the government is prioritising support for profitable polluters who are continuing to receive subsidies, while the backroom bureaucracy continues to grow and while foreign firms are avoiding tax on domestic activities. The balance is all wrong. Our Back Pocket Boost tax relief package has been put together very carefully to target the squeezed middle. These are the New Zealanders who work hard for a living. Often they juggle multiple jobs and family responsibilities. And right now, under Labor, they are struggling to get ahead. 
because inflation and high tax rates are eating away at their paychecks. They need income relief and National's plan will deliver it. The uh, benefits of our plan are fully laid out uh, in the appendixes and the policy document we've made available to you. Here are some highlights. For an average income household uh, earning $120,000 per year and without children, they will get a $100 boost per fortnight under our plan. So that is an average income household up to $100 better off every fortnight with National's plan. Households with children who have faced even higher increases in the cost of living as housing and childcare and grocery costs have gone up will get further benefit of up to $250 in increased income per fortnight. Superannuitant couples will also benefit from our plan and that's because superannuation is indexed to the after-tax average wage. After-tax average wages will be higher because of our plan and so superannuitant couples will be up to $26 better off per fortnight uh, than they would be under Labor. Breaking it down, we have heavily targeted our tax package at the median income worker, who under our plan, if they are, if they are being paid $60,000 a year, will be up to $50 per fortnight better off. For context, uh, someone on a higher income, in fact anyone earning $78,100 or more, will get less support than the median income worker at around $40 per fortnight. The full-time minimum wage worker will receive an income boost of up to $20 per fortnight. Importantly, they'll also pay less tax on an extra hour worked, with the marginal tax rate reducing from about 30 cents in the dollar to 17.5 cents in the dollar. They will also benefit significantly uh, from lower priced petrol and other goods across the economy. In terms of uh, these changes and how they break down, let me take you to the following slide. We have achieved the income tax relief I've laid out to you uh, across a package which is worth $3.1 billion uh, in its first year, rising to a cost of $4 billion in 2027-28. The total value of the tax package we are announcing today is $14.6 billion. I would highlight that the vast bulk of this tax package is for income relief, <clears throat> with $12 billion of that $14.6 going to income relief. <coughs> that income relief occurs through the following measures. A shift in the income tax brackets to compensate for inflation, the introduction of the Family Boost Childcare Tax Credit of up to $75 per week. The expansion of eligibility for the independent earner tax credit so that modest income earners get more relief. The independent earner tax credit was introduced by National and it was introduced so that those on lower wages would get a fair deal out of tax reduction. Under Labor, Inflation has meant fewer and fewer people get that payment. Uh, and that unless you earn $48,000 or less, you miss out. National's going to fix that by increasing eligibility for that payment to those earning $70,000 per year or less. That payment is worth $520 a year or $10 a week and allows us to ensure that income relief is targeted at the squeezed middle. This package also increases support via the Working for Families system in recognition of the fact that parents with children are doing it particularly tough. We increase the in-work tax credit by $25 uh, dollars, and we also lift the abatement threshold for the in-work tax credit from 1 April 2026. In terms of the timing of these changes, the full relief will be available from 1 July next year the Working for Families changes will be available a little earlier uh, on 1 April next year. The package also includes the removal of taxes Labor have put onto New Zealanders that have added to the cost of living. 
We will fully restore interest deductibility for rental properties. When Labor chose to add extra taxes to landlords, including by removing interest deductibility, they were warned it would put pressure on rents and push more people out of the private rental market and into state housing. Since Labor introduced their additional landlord taxes, average weekly rents have increased by $75 a week. National uh, will inst uh, restore interest deductibility in a phased way that is responsible and affordable. This means that from 1 July next year, interest redu deductibility will be at 50%, whereas under Labor uh, it will reduce to 25%. In 2025, interest deductibility will lift to 75%, and by 1 July 2026, interest deductibility will be fully restored. National will also bring the Bright Line test back to two years. This has become a capital gains tax by stealth that has ended up capturing the family homes of cancer patients and people affected by natural disaster. Our plan will change the Bright Line test from 1 July 2024, meaning anyone who bought a property before 1 July 2022 will no longer be subject to the Bright Line test under National. We will cancel the Auckland Regional Fuel Tax. This tax adds dollars every time Aucklanders fill up at the pump. It was meant to fund light rail. Labor have failed to deliver that. We will also cancel Labor's planned fuel tax hike of 12 cents over the next three years. That would add $8 every time a typical family fills up at the pump. We will cancel the app tax, which has changed the GST treatment uh, for services provided via digital platforms, and we will cancel the ute tax. Our plan is fully funded, prudent and responsible. National is the, gov is the party of responsible economic management and we have worked very hard to ensure our package meets a number of tests. Our package will not add to inflation and that is because it is fully funded over the forecast period with savings exceeding the amount needed for tax reduction in the first two years. Uh, it will take pressure off inflation. Our plan requires no additional borrowing and will not add to New Zealand's already very large debt position. Our plan can be responsibly delivered no matter how badly Labor leaves the books. We want to assure New Zealanders today who are watching this, your tax relief is coming no matter how badly Labor has wrecked the joint. Our plan requires no reductions to frontline health and education services. I want to send a warning here. Labor over the past few days has resorted to what is increasingly looking like disinformation in relation to Nationals policy positions. I will tell you now that they will be out there telling New Zealanders that the only way they can get income relief is by slashing health and education spending. That is not true. We will not be cutting health and education funding. In fact, National will increase health and education funding every year we are in government. Uh, when Labor look at this plan, if they are going to make those claims, they will need to justify them. Instead, our plan delivers this meaningful support for working people by combining careful spending reprioritisations and targeted new revenue measures. Let me take you through the targeted new revenue measures which uh, have provoked a guessing game this past 24 hours. The first targeted revenue measure brings New Zealand in step with many countries around the world. At the moment, there is a total ban on the purchase of homes in New Zealand from overseas-based persons. We will keep that ban for all homes valued at less than $2 million. However, for homes of a value of more than $2 million, we will uh, overturn the ban and instead impose a 15% foreign buyer tax on those purchases. We will exclude Australian and Singaporean buyers 
from this change due to our free trade obligations. We have had this proposal uh, independently checked. Uh, we have received independent legal advice that this will not uh, this will not damage any of our free trade relationships and is consistent with our agreements. Uh, I would point out uh, that other jurisdictions have taxes uh, on foreign purchases at a range of levels. Vancouver, 20 per cent. New South Wales, 8 per cent are a couple of examples. The second new targeted revenue measure uh, is ending Labor's commercial building depreciation tax break. The third is closing the tax loophole for overseas-based delivery of online casino gambling services. At the moment, on, uh, overseas-based casinos can provide online gambling services to New Zealanders while dodging the tax obligations that, provide to domest that apply to domestic-based uh, casino gambling. We think that's wrong, it's unfair, we're going to fix it. Number four... Uh, we are going to move the immigration levy system to more of a user pay system, consistent with how this is done around the world. At the moment, taxpayers end up cross-subsidising the cost of processing immigration levies, uh, and we don't think that this is the right approach. We will exclude any increases to levies for visitors or tourists, and we will also exclude Pacific Island countries due to our special relationships with them. And we will ensure that our levies are never uh, um, more than 90% more than Australian levies. We have also put together a package of spending reprioritisations. These are all about getting the priorities right. At a time when New Zealanders are really struggling, when there are families wondering whether they can buy milk for their kids or put meat on the table, it is appropriate that we are careful with every dollar of government spending. So National will reduce spending on back office bureaucracy. We will do this by requiring an efficiency dividend from a list of select government agencies. I want to be clear that this program will come on top of the reductions that the government announced earlier this week. Critically, though, this efficiency dividend will only come from some government departments. We are specifically excluding the Ministry of Health, Te Fato Ora, the Ministry of Education, the Education Review Office, the Department of Corrections, Oranga Tamariki, Police, the New Zealand Defence Force, uh, Crown entities including NZTA and Kaianga Ora. The reason for that is that those agencies will already be offering up savings as part of the program announced this week. But we want to ensure that any additional savings we are able to drive out of those growing bureaucracies go directly to frontline services. So that when Erica Stanford, as the Minister of Education, goes and finds waste in the back room, she can know every dollar saved will go to a local school or education provider. We think this strikes the right balance. We are also confident that there is waste to be found. I want to give you a couple of examples of the ballooning and the bureaucracy that has occurred. The Ministry of the Environment, for example, has more than tripled its departmental costs, which are now $248 million uh, in the next financial year. The Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment's costs are up 67% to $1.2 billion. The Ministry of Transport has more than doubled its costs, up to $76 million. We are confident that chief executives uh, and highly skilled public servants will be able to identify sensible areas for reduction. The second area of spending reprioritisation is reducing spending on consultants and contractors by an additional $400 million. Again, this comes on top of the proposed reductions the Government announced this week. We are confident it is achievable for context. Labor is spending $717 million more on consultants and contractors than when it came to office. The third area for spending reprioritisation is reprioritising the revenue raised by the emissions trading scheme. Our climate dividend is all about making the emissions trading scheme credible and sustainable. Over the past couple of years, Labor has fiddled with the emissions training, trading scheme because they have wanted to intervene out of concern for the price rising higher. 
This fiddling has got so bad, it has landed them in court, and they've had to admit that they were wrong after, um, after their interventions. The reason Labor have acted in this way is because they know uh, that the ETS over time could add to the cost of living. We acknowledge that, but instead of using the money that the ETS raises to subsidise big polluters, we're going to return those funds in a climate dividend for working people. I want to be really clear. National will continue to make significant investments <coughs> in emission reduction and climate change adaptation. Our approach and principle, though, will be to make sure that those projects stack up on their own merits and are funded from operating allowances. You can expect over the next few weeks of this campaign to see more climate change announcements from us, but it won't be to subsidise big, profitable polluters. Finally, uh, National will reprioritise funding away from a series of new initiatives that Labor have undertaken. Uh, workforce development councils, regional skills leadership groups, the 20 hours extension, which we are replacing with our family boost policy, uh, and the community connect policy. We know it's very important uh, that this plan uh, stacks up. So we have sought independent verification of our modelling and costing. Castalia advisors have been engaged to review our models and costings. They have authorised them as an accurate depiction of the fiscal impact of our plans. We did have Castalia review our plans again in light of the announcements made by the government this week. They have concluded that our costings are cautious and consistent, that they are possible and plausible. As I said earlier, we also obtained independent legal advice on the foreign buyer tax, which concludes this approach is consistent with New Zealand's existing free trade agreements. New Zealanders who are watching today need to know that this tax plan is for them. So to the people that I have spoken to who tell me they are working so hard but they feel like they're going further backwards every fortnight, relief is coming for you. To the people whose doors I've knocked on who've asked me how they are meant to cope with their rising mortgage payments and still send the kids to sport, this package is for you. To those people who are working extra hours, taking extra shifts to make it all add up, National sees your effort, we see your work, relief is on its way. Through a careful programme, we can deliver income tax relief and National will. So at this election, the choice is very clear. More taxes and a higher cost of living with Labour, Greens and Te Party Māori, or lower tax and more pay in your back pocket with National. And now the leader's going to join me for your questions. Well, firstly, can I just say thank you to Nicola for taking us through the detail. I think the message is extremely clear. Uh, if you are out there and you're working incredibly hard, you're being hammered by this government and you're struggling to get ahead, you're going to do well with relief under this plan. And we are going to restore the promise of New Zealand, which is that if you work hard in the best country on planet Earth, that you can get ahead. And I think what you've seen today is a costed, well thought through, prudent, economically responsible plan uh, that's actually going to deliver for New Zealand families and importantly for the New Zealand economy. And with that, we're very happy to take your questions. <laughs> because we have deliberately excluded uh, houses under the value of $2 million. Mm -hmm. The average house price in New Zealand is less than $1 million. These buyers won't be competing with ordinary uh, New Zealanders. Uh, and also, they will um, face a major barrier to speculation, yeah. because they'll be paying 15% more than any New Zealander, which will deter speculation. You gave the examples of Vancouver Mm. The two issues are not linked. What we're saying very clearly is that actually what you see when you see tax buyer uh, taxes or foreign buyer taxes put in place, we think that's a really good way to stop speculation. Uh, there's actually going to be a very small number of houses in the scheme of what's sold in New Zealand actually made available to foreign buyers is what happens. But importantly, what this is about is actually saying to that tech entrepreneur that actually wants to make an investment in New Zealand and actually wants to be able to purchase a house, to be able to set up a business, to make an investment, uh, we want them to be able to do that here in New Zealand. We need 
to be able to access talent, we need to be able to access capital, uh, and actually we, I think we've put the right checks and balances in place. $2 million threshold, 15% property tax, uh, and also making sure all the normal checks and balances are in place. And to be Sorry, Jessica? Yeah. Uh, absolutely not. I mean, as you can see, you know, full-time minimum wage workers are going to get $20 a fortnight of relief. That is $20 more that they will get under national than Labor. Uh, it's certainly a lot more than two cents on some carrots and some beans. But, but what I'd say to you also, but what I'd say also is that there are often in those cases uh, people that are entitled to other entitlements. Think about accommodation supplements, think about childcare uh, rebates as well. Uh, and importantly, as Nicola outlined, the removal of the other taxes actually around fuel and other things will make their daily life much better as well. So, you know, we have we make no excuses. We have targeted this very deliberately at the at the at the squeeze middle, uh, and that's what this has been about. You're Sorry, to Jason. To Sorry. I mean, in Auckland, a $2 million house isn't exactly a, a mansion these days with house prices. So, and a lot of um, foreign buyers are looking to buy there. So aren't you just putting more and more pressure on the Auckland market? No, we don't think mm. so. Look, um, our modelling assumes fewer than 2,000 transactions will occur as a result of this tax. But secondly, I'd I invite you to reflect back on what Labor promised when they introduced the foreign buyers ban. Yeah. They said that house prices would come down. They absolutely did not. High yeah. House prices have skyrocketed under Labor. And as I say, the evidence from economists around the world uh, is that actually a foreign buyer tax is mm. the best way to prevent speculation by overseas buyers. Jason, let's go, Jason. Sorry, guys, let's get to Jason. To, if you, to get in government, need a coalition partner. How much of this is up for debate in those sort of coalition talks? Is this all ring fenced? You will not be touching National's tax plan, or is there any part of this that you'll be able to negotiate on, negotiate on with, um, potentially act toward New Zealand first? Or well, look, what I'm saying very clearly to you, and I've been saying over a number of weeks now, is that if you want a guaranteed change of government, if you actually want a government that's going to back the, the squeeze middle, there's only thing, one thing to do, party vote national. This is our plan. This is a guarantee. Irrespective of what happens with prefu and other things, by virtue of being self-funded, we can guarantee this delivery to the squeeze yes, middle and working New Zealanders. That means, that means, no, that means it doesn't matter what happens in any sort of coalition arrangements, this is the plan that, we'll, that Kiwis will get if they get a national government. This, no room for tinkering. This is the plan that we think is going to make the biggest difference to the squeeze so middle and to be able to help Help New Zealanders be able to get ahead. Specifically, is this all ring fence, meaning that any coalition partners can't come in and make changes, or are you saying that there is some that's open for debate? This is this is our tax plan. We're taking this to the election, and importantly, we're going to implement it on the other side. And those who are choosing who to vote for, my message would be: <laughs> this is the best tax plan you are going to see out of a party at this election. If you want this tax relief, party vote national. Can I go clear? What is the, um, what is the cost? Uh, the revenue initiatives amount to $6.3 billion over the four years. In year one, uh, they save $1.5 billion, rising to $1.6 in 2027-2028. All the costings are laid out on page 22 of the document. Sorry. We're going, to make an, we're going to make a specific announcement uh, mm. about that shortly. That's a campaign announcement. Uh, we're just going to hold back some of the details of that today. Well, Jane. Giving, um, the landlords uh, that restoring that tax break that's worth a lot of money, would you expect then those rents to come back? You mentioned the, mm. the impact of a, of a coming off in the first place. What's your message about those rents that are controlled Well, our message really clearly is that we think renters will be, un will do, be do much better under a national government than a Labor government no, because no, there will be... Correct. Well, our message is we expect downward pressure on rents because what we're saying very clearly is that those two initiatives that the government were advised not to do added $75 a week to rents. That's put huge pressure under the squeeze middle, big, big pressure on the squeeze middle. And what we're asking for is actually that they, we think there'll be more downward pressure under our plan than will be under a Labor plan. So what's your policy on the gold card? Um, in what sense? No changes. It stays exactly as it is. So yes. We're expecting, inter we're expecting interest. We're expecting the removal of the bright line test from 10 years back to two and the unwinding of interest deductibility to actually put downward pressure on rents. You're telling me that landlords are uniformly going to pass it 
We're going to make sure they put downward pressure on rents, keeping it. Well, all, I, all I'd say to you is the counterfactual is that if you keep it in place, you end up you end up driving rent prices up. There's downward pressure on on rents. That's what we expect to see. Because there's a choice here, John. Mm. The choice is that costs are added on to landlords over the next few years by Labor, and I've spoken to those landlords. Many of them are extremely good to their tenants. Mm. They have worked really hard to try and keep rents affordable mm. during a cost of living crisis, but they are at breaking point. They have said to me, look, if the costs keep going up, I'm going to have to hike my rents more. Yeah. So the choice is clear. We're going to take that pressure away so that they won't have to make those difficult choices for their tenants. And I'll just say, John, it's, a very, sorry, it's very important that we get the private rental market functioning correctly. You know, if you can't buy a house, you rent a house. If you can't rent one, you end up on a state house wait list. It's up fourfold under this government. And so it's important we get that market functioning right. Those costs have added $75 a week. We need to put downward pressure on rents, and the way we do that is we take the cost out, we keep the landlords in the market, we keep the supply of rental property in place, and we keep people in their own homes. I have met people, I've met people who have fallen out of those private rental arrangements because they went up $50 a week, and lo and behold, they end up on a state house wait list. Sorry. Sorry, Joe Moore. Uh, absolutely correct. We're going to repeal it. So, and that, well, no, I'm saying the RNA is national, as I understand, it thinks that it needs a lot of work still. So, won't uh, what we've com staff to actually what do we've that? So you're replacing Labor's staff with national staff? No, what, what we've committed to is actually repealing David Parker's RMA that's been rammed through in the last few months. Uh, we're going to say we're going to do that very quickly. And, and you, don't, and you don't expect that you'll have any public servants working on any work program to fix the RMA we, we will, we will have over the medium to long term, but what we expect is we... Money, right? so what correct. Work? But what I just say to you, what I just say to you is, you know, what is unique in this place in Wellington that is different from anywhere else in the country is that politics and government seem to measure success by how much money is spent rather than the outcomes that are achieved. We are interested in we will spend more money where we need to. We'll back the programmes that are going to work, but we are not going to put bad money after bad programmes. And what we are going to do is focus on outcomes very strongly. And so we are very confident that we can get more efficiency out of this public service to deliver the things that we want to do. We will be stopping work programs that we do not support from this government that have actually got huge, huge amounts of teams and workers involved, and we'll be using existing public services to get our agenda away. But we are going to manage the public service better, and we are going to get outcomes. Sorry, Thomas. Thomas. Sorry, let's go to Thomas. Right now, there is money from the Auckland Regional Fuel mm, Tax sitting in a bank account unused. That, how is that conscionable in mm. the middle of a cost of living crisis in which New Zealanders are feeling pain every time they fill up at the pump? When Labor first introduced that Regional mm. Fuel Tax, they said it was so that Auckland would get additional roading projects and additional uh, light rail projects. They haven't got that. We will remove the Auckland Regional Fuel Tax. Sorry. <laughs> uh, what I'd say to you very clearly is I'm not interested in what any other party says about our tax plan. Uh, we have thought deeply about this. We have talked about, Nicola and I, since we became the leaders, have talked to all of you about the importance of the cost of living, about making adjustments to deal with the underlying causes of inflation, about giving people tax relief so they, they spend more of their own money, and we trust them to do that better than we trust this government. We are now delivering today with a fully costed, fully funded plan, uh, and we think this is the right way to take forward, and, and actually we are going to back uh, the squeeze middle in New Zealand. And can, I, can I just add that I'd say to David Seymour, $50 <laughs> a fortnight is a very heavy pocket of loose change. Yeah. Well, let me let me answer that one because I heard Chris Hipkins bang on about that this morning. But what I just say to you is, everyone in this parliamentary services precinct is paid fortnightly, and I think when you bring it to life for people so they understand what they're getting in their paycheck, we want we 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 want more powerful paychecks, and I want everyone to understand what that means for them personally. And what you can see here is that there is meaningful tax relief that actually people can understand whether you've got a rising mortgage 
rising rent, rising food prices, rising fuel at the pump, uh, you can actually work out actually the extra savings that you're going to, extra, extra benefit you're going to have, and extra cash in your pocket to deal with those costs. Oh, immigration, we're, we're, we are flying out. Mm -hmm. Nurses, teachers, Correct. Nurses. Is this basically a colour tax? Uh, absolutely no. not. Uh, that's something that uh, I've worked closely with Erica Stanford, mm. our immigration spokesperson, on. The evidence shows that the most important factor when a migrant is choosing to which country to come to is the visa processing time, mm -hmm. whether they're going to have certainty over their future and their pathway to residency and the rights that it brings, and how competitive our immigration settings are. Levies are such a small portion of the cost mm. of moving country that they are not a decisive factor. I'd also note that the government itself lifted immigration levies in the past year or so, and we've seen since that time the number of visa applications absolutely soar, which would suggest to you yep. that these levies are not a deterrent factor. I'd also point out the important aspect of our policy, mm. which is when you look at those comparisons of New Zealand visa fees with Australian fees, ours are much lower. Mm. We're going to keep them lower, but we're just going to address their balance a bit. Sorry, sorry, Rebecca. Rebecca, I want to talk about, the, you know, this tax policy is the jewel in the crown of the National Party as it heads into the election. If I'm a person on 80000 dollars a year, my tax rate, I think, is around $20 a week. Or yep, $40 a, a fortnight. Is that really a game changer for people in this economic environment? Well, I think someone on $80,000 a week will be making a judgment about the kind of government that they want. I'm not saying it's a game changer for them personally, economically, $20 a week. So for some it will, and for others, they mm. will. the game changer for them will be a better managed economy in which wages will grow faster and inflation will lo be lower. Well, I, I, for I just, others it will be the yeah. changes in the education system. Mm. For others it will be a better performing health system. People vote according to different... I'll just say, Rebecca, I mean, it was interesting to me. I, came, I had a couple. I had a 13-year-old boy come up to me the other day at a public meeting, and he came up to me after I stopped speaking, raced up on stage and said to me, Chris, is there any way that the government would pay for my braces? And I said to him, mate, I'm sorry, actually, with our healthcare spend, that's something that we can't afford. I'd love to do it, but we can't do it. Quickly, his mum and dad got up to me, and, I, and they said, look, I'm sorry, Chris, the, he's asking the question because two nights ago, we as a family actually had to uh, say to him, we can't afford the braces because we've actually had our mortgage rate go from 2.7% to 6.7% and have to find 700 bucks a fortnight. That is meaningful, and this is what we're dealing with here. And so, you know, $20 a fortnight helps that family deal with some of those costs. That is for the median, that is for the average wage. But when you get into the provinces, actually the median wage or the average wage is much less than the 120000 mm. that you modelled on. So if mm. I'm a family of two, with two, uh, two adults, Tax a couple credit. in the um, manor with two, mm -hmm. it's actually only worth $17 a week to me. So what income are you saying that they well, would get? 100000 for a couple in the manor with two. So they would and get $68 the, a fortnight in income relief if they don't have children. So if they do each. have children, they would be able to get an up to an additional mm. $75 per week in childcare so tax rebates. $17 a week for, that, for each um, member of that, family, of that couple. That's the same in Taranaki, Brisbane, and the Bay of Plenty, Waikato, uh, Otago, Southland. Is this tax cuts for higher earners in the city? No, this no. is targeted at the squeezed middle. As you can see from the tables, which are available yeah. uh, on pages 23, uh, 24 through 26, the b most relief goes to people on median incomes. So median the most income relief goes to people on average incomes. What about, why are you scrapping the free and half price public transport? Uh, look, the, uh, we want to see that uh, students and others continue to get discounted fares, as has long been the case. Uh, there's not good evidence that this is a major barrier to public transport use. Mm. We prefer to give people the money direct into Personal their bank accounts so they can make choices How about what they spend it on. How is this not inflationary? How is this not inflationary? You're not making stuff cheaper, so instead of just giving it to people, how are you yep. justifying it not being inflationary? Because it's fully balanced. So to use some wonky economics terms, uh, it doesn't create fiscal stimulus because we are saving more than we are spending on tax reduction, so particularly have... over the first two years of the package in which the amount that we are saving and generating mm -hmm. through new revenue initiatives uh, is less than we are offering in tax uh, Sorry, just in, just in, in, in simple in, sorry guys, in simple terms yes. yeah, Amelia, just it's important to understand is because the tax uh, relief is actually fully funded from existing government spending and mm -hmm. new revenue raises and then when you actually give it to people 
uh, individuals will choose to save it. They might put it into their mortgage rather than spend it. It is a lot less inflationary than any other government spending activity. Oh so that's God. the key, is that because we're actually funding it out of wasteful spending and also new revenue measures and also individuals will actually spend or save it, uh, that actually means it's a lot less inflationary and that's, that's you know, well-established economic oh practice. And it, and it doesn't sorry, Jane. require a dollar of borrowing, which is really important. Sorry, sorry, can I just go to Thomas and then we'll go to Jane and then Richard. No. No. Yes. So what we have done is we have based our modelling for the revenue from this on the uh, emissions price that was in the budget. Um, since the budget, um, yeah. we have actually seen a increase in the emissions trading scheme, which would mean that there would be more revenue available. We haven't counted that. We've taken the conservative estimate so that we can be confident we can fully fund the plan. Will you the price rise higher to fund more actually? Look, whether it's Labor or National, for the emissions trading scheme to do its job, it needs mm. to charge polluters more for using mm -hmm. fossil fuels. Yep. Labor's attempts to get in the way of that by cutting checks to big polluters, mm. by fiddling with the price, all that does is undermine our emission reduction effort. Under National, the emissions trading scheme will be sustainable, it will be credible. <laughs> Sorry, can I go to Jane and then we'll go to Jessica? Sorry. Um, Yes, fewer than 2,000. Sorry, Richard. When do, expect, when do you expect to get back to surplus? Yep. Uh, we will set that out in our fiscal plan, after which we will deliver after PREFU. It's not responsible for me to make claims about the future mm. without seeing how bad the books are. That's why we've been so careful in this plan to insulate it so it doesn't require a single dollar mm. of future operating allowances. I just note, Labor's tax plan mm. requires them to dip into future budgets mm -hmm. and future operating allowances. We've deliberately avoided that mm. so that we can put together a responsible set of books after the pre-election update. Sorry, can I go, Jess? You, you talk about the squeeze middles. What are both of you getting out of this policy? Well, as Nicola said, we've got this capped at $78,100. What that means for us and for many of you in the room, I suspect, is that it's $40 a fortnight. Uh, but as, a, as Nicola has said, for a median average income earner, they'll get $50 a fortnight. And that's what we've been able to do, is to be able to say we are going to build and prioritise delivery of relief for those that are in the squeeze middle. In our family, in our family there's two income earners. We'll get $80 more a fortnight. And kids... That means that instead of movie night being DVDs and tip top at home, we might go out to the movies. A bit. You might you might get some Ben and Jerry's. You guys are no way this middle, no. Though. But no. I want I want to say really clearly because I've watched Chris Hipkins do some shenanigans over the last week or so, and what I just say to him is whether you're a millionaire or whether you earn eighty thousand dollars a year, you're going to get the same amount of do the same dollar amount of tax relief, which is in this case forty dollars a fortnight. Can I can I go can I look? Sorry, how easy is it to access? Yeah, look, I think they are, and that's why we're presenting it in really clear terms for people but on a fortnightly basis so they can link it to their direct paycheck. What I just say to you is we're cutting the middleman out. Uh, what we're doing is we're not passing through taking GST off food and leaving, you know, 30% of it maybe gets through a supermarket chain. Well, what promise. we're not doing is actually the ECE credit. Uh, we're giving people direct tax relief and keeping their money in their own pocket well, directly. Yes. Yes, that, that, look, successive governments have invested uh, hundreds of millions in upgrading and yep. land revenue systems exactly so they can do, do this. this. And I just want to note, uh, New Zealanders who want to know what this tax package means for them can look at the tables we're putting online today, uh, but there's something extra coming tomorrow. There will be a calculator available so yeah. everyone can work out what they're getting. Brent, 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 sorry. Sorry, I'm going to Brent, sorry.
oh look, again, you know, what we're dealing with is a really dynamic set of economic circumstances. You know, I want to be really clear to the New Zealand people, this is a government that has run the New Zealand economy into the ground. It has been economic mismanagement on scale. So, so what I'm saying to you very clearly is, what we're waiting for is prefu uh, on September 12. Uh, we're going to look at the fiscal situation at that point. That's why we've decoupled our tax plan from our fiscal plan, and we will keep watching it. <laughs> sorry, 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 Claudette. Sorry, guys. Just. Well, if that's, uh, for example, a household in Tairawhiri with a household income of $40,000 and two children, uh, they'll get income relief of up to $59 a fortnight. Why don't we squeeze that term below $48,000 because we do have a lot of our income, mm. particularly also in that 15000 bracket? What for them? Well, Marginal they will uh, both uh, be able to have cheaper petrol, which mm. is a significant cost for them. They will continue to be eligible for a range of government entitlements, including, mm. for example, accommodation. Uh, the accommodation supplement, the community services card. If they have children, uh, they will be eligible for the Family Boost Childcare Tax rebate. And they, under a national government, will face a lower cost of living with lower inflation and the opportunity for higher incomes in the future. OK, two, two more questions. Sorry. You said you've decoupled your tax policy from the fiscal way, but what you've done here is about to identify $14 billion in, in, in revenue and savings. That's not the case. You've now dedicated tax cuts that won't be available to pay down debt or to pay down a surplus. Mm. because the squeeze middle are doing it far too tough. Mm. And in New Zealand right now, we have the balance wrong. The mm. government's spending 80% more, and New Zealanders aren't getting 80% more. Actually, we've got a cost of living crisis in people's back pockets, and this plan is about addressing that. That is the number one issue yeah. facing New Zealand workers, and a national government is determined to offer them relief. Okay. Okay, last, sorry, last question, Tova. Well, look, I'd say we have been working incredibly hard on this for months. Uh, we've brought in external advice to go through our numbers in great detail. Nicola and our team and myself have gone through it in great detail. Uh, we are very confident in our numbers. How much, how much do you use on the public service cuts? The government is suggesting that anything beyond the government Look, can I just be... Can I be really honest? It is quite outrageous. You know, since Nicola and I became leaders of this party, we have talked to you right from day one about the issues around rising levels of inflation. You'll remember we talked about there are amber lights on the dashboard. We need to start making adjustments now, otherwise we'll drive into inflation. Inflation causes higher interest rates. Higher interest rates put the country into recession. Recession leads to rising unemployment. That's the history of economics. And this government, over the last six years, and after the last two years in particular, has made no adjustments. 46 days before an election, they discover that there might be some wasteful spending inside the public service. And, uh, and, and, and no. no. And as you can see, we are protecting, and we said a long time ago, we both made a commitment that we would increase health and education spending each and every year that we're in government. Yeah. Nicola's laid out very clearly the frontline agencies that we actually want to protect, and we want to get the money out of the centre and out of the bureaucracy, and we need to get it to the front line so it can work harder and get better outcomes for New Zealand. With that, can I say thank you so much? We're appreciate gonna, your time. We're now, we've had an hour. There's going to be lots of questions over the next few days, and we look forward to them. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate your time. Take care. See ya.